that I want to get back into my imagination. Hi everybody, it's me, Catherine, um, artist and painter here up in the mountains. And I did not plan to do this video in the rain, but it keeps happening for some reason. I guess when it's dark and gloomy, I'm like, oh, I could film something. So we're gonna have a little extra pitter patter during this video, but I'm gonna be going through my sketchbooks. I'm gonna show you where I am with the sketchbook challenge that I'm doing with Documented Journey, Brie. Go check out her channel. She is one of my dear friends. She actually has inspired me so much over the years and she has so much content and beautiful, beautiful works of art. So please go check her out. Um, leave some comments on her videos and and see what she's doing in her sketchbook. She is killing it. We have this whole um, challenge going on this spring to fill up our books and I am inching along ever slowly. But I think today we're gonna discover I'm maybe a little bit closer than I thought I was. So I think that's the fun thing. We're gonna kind of take inventory and I'm gonna paint and maybe finish a couple sketchbooks right now. Here we are. I've got a stack of sketchbooks actually. Um, I have two stacks, two stacks of sketchbooks and this isn't even all of them. Okay. I, you know, I've done a lot of work. We'll, I'll show you. I have, I have been working in these. Some of these are so, so close. And I was also trying out a lot of different sketchbooks for the sake of being able to recommend them for my sketchbook journey class that's online. You can sign up at any time. Just a little, little tiny plug there. Um, because I wanted to be able to say like, oh, this is a good, sorry, sorry. Um, this is a good book or that, you know, what are my favorites? The ones that I've been using the longest um, generally are just like the moleskin. And I really like these little tiny ones for when I'm hiking. This one I turned into my flower book, but I started it in 2020, three years ago. 20. Yeah. Oh goodness. The violet. So I just like, I set out to just paint every flower I saw and I was doing pretty good. Um, the Jack in the pulpit. I used a little bit of gouache on that. My cucumbers in the garden. I was pretty proud of those. Some other fun, unusual, that's a doodle page, it happens. This one, I love this one. This one's about to start blooming soon here. Actually, I haven't seen mine coming up here. But I've, I've seen them coming up maybe a lower elevation, but this is the Smalls Ragwort. I really love that one. Um, this one was in the yard, it's Foxglove. Some more of the Pine Sap. Um, some colors. Oh, this is what I was looking for. Okay. Sometimes I, I put things down. I actually try to keep, I'm trying to keep all of my color stuff in this book. I love the paper of the Paul Rubens. Um, I just really dislike the perforation in terms of painting. I like, I just found it really distracted me and um, there's a little bit of kind of binding issues with it, but the paper is excellent quality. Um, so I found like, I liked to do kind of my color studies and swatching and figuring out my palettes and doing some color comparisons with different mixes. This paper is excellent for that. I have a whole video on my blues. Um, that's a nice 45 minute video. If you want to sit back and relax and talk about paint colors, some mixing. Um, so this book I really enjoyed it. This is the one I did for my branch palette. Um, this is what I did and studied for this palette here. I'm really, really loving the um, the colors I picked out. This is for my whole travel setup. I made a board and it sits on there. And then I also have it so that my water cups can sit on here without tilting or without spilling. And then the sketchbook can clip on perfectly. So I, this is like a whole system I'm so happy to finally have so that I can really have a whole stable setup when I go out. 
But yeah, so these are the colors I picked out for this one. And a switch, if, if you like to talk color, I switched from, because I have Quinoffered and Gold, I really like Yellow Ochre, but I decided it's more useful, I think, to have Goethite. It's granulating, and you can kind of get some of those similar ochre vibes with it. A little less yellow, but if you mix it with the Quinoffered and Gold, you can kind of get it more yellow. Um, but I did all these mixes here or with the, um, Goethite and I just, I like, I like what I see. Um, yeah, I just find it, I think it's going to be really useful. So I did some more kind of yellow testing, kind of seeing the different properties of yellow. Um, picking out colors for, I don't know what that was for actually. Um, but this was picking out colors for um, my in-person watercolor classes. And um, and I actually, I made little wooden palettes for those. I'll show you another time. Um, but yeah, so that was really fun. And then I could kind of custom the, um, the palettes that I'll be working with in all of my um, in-person classes and workshops. So, but look here. I did a little color mixing here with those shades, <gasps> but one and a half. So I have like one and a half spreads here. I think I'm going to, um, probably just for the sake of being, uh, having everything in one place. Cause I was looking for this over and over. So I think I'm actually going to put this in here. So these colors, um, I'll put that in there. So we'll do that in this video, but, um, if you're on Instagram, you saw me do this one. I haven't finished the detail, but one of the things I did, see some of them kind of ugly, is I just went through and drew all of these um, images because that I know is going to be something I can just kind of sit down and paint them at some time. Um, if you're on my Patreon, I have a video of me just sitting and drawing um, these and oh, this is a mountain magnolia. I like how that turned out. I love working with white petals and um, figuring out shadows and colors and got the echinacea. So I went through and I was like, if I draw it on there, I can finish it and I need to finish it. Maybe we'll do that today as well. Um, and how far do we get? Oh, I did this with Bree's Patreon. She's got a really fun sketchbook get together. Uh, really, really great. She puts like, she does exercises and it really does stretch you to increase um, your ability and just kind of how you're, how you're sketching and how you're filling up your pages. So I really, really highly recommend that. Did this little painting and look here, one, two. So kind of almost done, like you can sort of call these pages are filled, but they're not done. So I need to finish painting that. Maybe I'll do that today too. So these two are close and let's move this out of the way. This is another palette. I can't wait to fill this up. Oh, this is, that's what that was for is the palette pages for this. Um, yeah, I, you know, now I've got a little, um, obsession with all of my wooden palettes, but Hey, that's the beauty of making things that you love. Okay. Um, this has been one of my little landscape books. I started around the same time as the flower book. Um, so I've almost finished this one. This, I love how in this one I have the same landscape in different seasons. So we've got the river bend here and then we've got it here in winter. And then between that, I have a, another waterfall. I love like, I mean, you can tell there's lots of, of rain on my roof. We live in a very like wet mountain area and it's, it's lovely. Lots of little waterfalls and streams. Um, this is actually the little tiny house I live in. Um, so there's the spring version. A simple mountain. Nothing to write home about. This is um, down at the river. And kind of the cliff kind of comes up. So this is a little waterfall that comes down in the river. And the cliff comes up. It's one of those things. I, I know that it's like very abstract. So because it's a place I visit, I know what it is. I don't know if anybody else would be able to gather 
what that is, but I love the color. Like, I don't know, that one makes me happy. Um, I had some schmink and paints at that time. Or did I? No, I have a 10. I have a 10. And that's what I had in the 10. Um, I was playing with some walnut ink. And I really, really liked it. Oh, there's a little... My house again. Done kind of differently, stylistically. Another waterfall. Love the waterfalls. Uh, oh, another waterfall. Stacked rocks. Oh, I know exactly. Yeah. I like to write little things down. Um, yeah, I love the grays and greens of the, the rock. This one, it was that same um, river scene with a cliff over it. I did it a little differently. Don't love it as much. Added some white. Mistakes, but that's what a sketchbook is for. Another little mountain scene. And then that was like a, a moth or a butterfly that I saw that same day. Um, just a yard. Just another little mountain scene. Just trying to capture the different blues. Um, I went to the... I went to the... Like um, the ocean. I went to the ocean. I saw the ocean. And I painted the ocean. And I scuba dived in the ocean. And I saw corals. And that was really exciting. I'm not one of those people that's like really techno savvy. So... I didn't have like any sort of underwater camera. So I, every time I would come out of the water, I would like make lists of like the colors I saw and then try to like sketch things out. Um, I, ha I, don't, I don't remember which which other sketchbook I was doing working in at that time because I know I did more than this. But yeah, it's a whole other world there. I love it. Um, fall colors, landscape, more fall colors, landscape out here. You know, sometimes you just put some blue lines down. Here's one I have not finished and colored in. Oh, yeah, I did that the other day. Or maybe, like, last month. I need to finish painting that. Ah, oh, this is one. I did this one on Instagram. And um, really enjoyed that. I want to get back into my imagination. Um, so that's one of the things that perhaps... Uh, my new sketchbook, which is going to be this one. I'm really excited. I'm taking it traveling. Um, I'm leaving for a trip in the future. And this is the Baohong. I did a review about the paper pad, but I really think this is going to be nice paper. Um, I did have to glue the front two pages together because it was sort of coming apart here. But once you do that, this thing is solid. And I did that on the back as well. So just so you know... Um, there was a little bit of like the cover coming off, but I took care of that right away and I'm not worried. I think this is going to be great. It lays really nice and flat. The pages feel really, really nice. Um, so I actually think I want to work in my, with my imagination more, um, in my new sketchbook. So this is a little nod to that, but maybe I've got, let's see, one, two, three, Four, oh, five, one, did I count two, three, four, four more spreads in this one. And maybe I, I kind of go along with the Hobbit theme again. I'm kind of a little obsessed with Hobbits. I think I want to read the Hobbit again, um, or maybe listen on audiobook, but, um, yeah, maybe I'll f finish this one with some more dreamscapes. So there's that one. Oh, the Etcher. I, this is a loved book by many. And I have, I, I'm really, I am happy with some of the front pages. I'm okay happy with them. I don't know what this was. But not thrilled. Like, I didn't feel thrilled by the paper in comparison to some others. Especially with the price point. I think that... There's always this, like, kind of teeter. Is it worth it in one way versus the price? And all those things kind of fluctuate. The trilliums. Oh, I can't wait till those come out. Oh, that's going to be so soon. Um, see, that one I hated so much. I painted over it. Um, uh, more of the Smalls Rag War. I'm happy with how that came out. But I don't think... I don't know. Um, 
Oh, that was a, look at, but that was, mm, that's not pretty, but it's there. This is one of the landscapes. It, it's, um, you know, mm, I never finished this one. So that's the thing. When I don't finish things, it, it does tell me, like, maybe I just didn't have fun with the paper. Like, that turned out pretty nice. The fountain pen works okay on this paper because it's not, I mean, I, this is cold press, but it's not, not that textured. Um, it's not too, too horrible. Um, that was a fall hike with a bridge, not my best bridge. And here we can see this is where I start to lose favor with the paper. And so then I just kind of turn it into, this is what happens when, when the paper is like nice, but not totally enjoyable. I'll start just doing that. I, I mean, that turned out okay, but I wouldn't say, I don't know. I mean, is it the paper or is it just, I, I kind of don't like this format, this size anymore. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm so excited about this. Like it's kind of similar, but it's shorter. I think that's going to be really fun. But, um, that was like a hike. These are all the things I saw on a hike, um, about this time last year. So I was supposed to go on that hike this week, but things were too busy. So I really, really want to get back down. So I did. Yeah, this is what happens when I kind of fall out. I love Hematite Violet. Just this one's by Daniel Smith. There are some other really beautiful versions of it. I really love the Hematite from um, Greenleaf and Blueberry. It makes a really beautiful, stunning version. And then... I have the sample from Letter Sparrow, which is also another beautiful handmade version of that color. Really, really love it. Um, yeah, here we go. These are some triads. This is when I was kind of doing some stuff for my sketchbook class. This is, I did a mixing wheel of complementary colors. So I did like the yellow and the purples and then the greens and the reds and kind of looked at some of the earthier tones I can mix from um, the colors in my palette and interesting, I guess it's funny. A lot of my colors haven't changed, but some of them have, they're still pretty similar. Um, but I've switched out the Hansa medium for, um, Aurelian hue. This one's by Holbein. So Aurelian, if it's the real Aurelian, it is, it's never going to stay yellow. It's very, um, shifting with sunlight it kind of turns brown so this hue I've found is seems really stable I've been testing it and really really like it for that kind of that similar yellow but not quite as medium as that um I also I still love Pearling Green I have switched from End and Throne to Indigo just to be able to get a little bit faster deep darks. And I love the greens that you make with Indigo. Um, and then I have added back in, you know, I didn't do it in this one. I haven't missed it. I haven't missed it here. I added back in Thalo Blue over here. And then I've also added in Cobalt. Um, I've just really missed it. So that's when I kind of will like, um, limit my palette down. It, I like doing that because it reminds me of what I miss and then I can start to add it back in. So I'll work with like a really limited palette. And when there's, when I find myself like wishing a color was in there for a little while, that's when I know I need to bring it back. And that's why I love this one. Cause it's basically got everything and I, um, have one spot left. I was trying really, really hard to leave a space open for that just in case. Like, why weren't, why didn't you think of that? Um, yeah, I tested this landscape in like all of my different sketchbooks for my online class to kind of show and compare how doing the same kind of technique on different papers can look, but it didn't turn out that well in here. It's a little more mushy, but I'm almost done with this one. Four, five, six. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do today I, it is, I am not going to finish all these, but I'm giving you sort of an update of where I am, what I have to finish. So I will do, I mean, I guess I've kind of, you're not going to want to sit through another one, but maybe I'll do like a pretty music background once they are all, all finished. Um, 
and just kind of have like a little relaxing flip through of those. But um, this one I did of flowers. This is a Stillman and Burn. I, I kind of just want to show you what I need to do, what's left to do. I really, I enjoyed this. I don't know why I kind of got out of enjoying it. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it comes, I love this painting. I, I love the way that one came out. I even have a print of it and did a sticker of it. I was really, really happy with that. I love the way ink, um, ink flows on this page. So I did, this paper made me feel like free to really study. Um, I do have some rub off from this page to that page. I can see there. Um, I said overworked down here. Sometimes I critique my own pages. This was a little, I think it was a pea, a baby pea seed um, with a little sprout on top. I pulled it out of the garden. Or maybe it never made it. Maybe it was too close. I don't know. I pulled it out, drew it. This is the showy orchis. So, you know, my pages aren't like that great. Like I kind of like work out some things. How do I want it on a page? Um, cause I actually did a finished painting of this on another piece of paper. So that's part of what I'm like working out here. I love the way that came out. I wonder if I was using the walnut ink there, but, um, the painted trillium love working with this one. I liked doing kind of the drawing and then the painted version as well. Um, yeah. Pink lady slipper, similar to these that I kind of, I did sort of monochromatic versions and then this is a more realistic. Oh, this kind of makes me miss this paper. But I am getting, that's really interesting, I'm getting some transfer. Could have just been, I was dirty hands at the time though. Um, little Mountain Creek. Filling out my folio palette, um, my art toolkit folio palette. It's similar, actually it's changed a lot. I'd take it back. Some ugly drawing, you know, we have to draw ugly sometimes to get it right. Studying leaves, like I could make this look more beautiful, but it was, it was functional in the moment. So that's what I remind myself is like, people do flip, for, flip throughs and they just, oh, like you can kind of drool over them because they look so beautiful. Mine. I can just do functional. It's like, oh, I didn't get this leaf shit. Like, I got this. This looks bad. And so then I just flip the page and I kind of work on it a little bit more. So that was sort of all of what I was trying to figure out was how are things connected. Look at that stem goes through the leaf. So, like, there are other people that do a much more um, polished job of that. No idea what this is. I think it was the Trillium Hill again. But I just kind of... Use a sketch, use it like a sketchbook. It's not an art book, it's a sketchbook. It's just pages to learn on. Um, yeah, this is the spring. So in the gorge, like when you're up here, like the river is like over a thousand feet below. So the spring comes up from down here cause it's warmer and then you'll see it start to kind of grow up the cliffs. I love that. And the same thing happens with fall is that fall actually goes reverse. So fall comes up up here first and then it starts to slowly go down i love that i love nature uh, another palette workout that's an ugly page this is when i was doing the comparison for the sketchbook class again kind of showing what the paints look like on the page a little black and white warbler it must have been out my window never finished that same thing with the um color wheels and you can see how they the color looks different on different paper. Ah, there's that landscape I was saying I did in all of the books. I actually really like the way it looks on this page. Did, have I finished this book almost? This is the Van Gogh palette. I really, really highly recommend that for, um, like if you just need to get a set to get started. I did switch out a couple colors on it though. Yeah, so this is all for my sketchbook class. This one's almost done. Let no, I mean it's not done till it's done. So we've got one, two. I'm so close. Okay, so close to finishing that one. This one, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm only halfway through. I used to love painting on this, and I, I think I've already talked about it a little bit. 
I already showed you this one, didn't I? A little bit. Not much, but I, I just have lost... I have lost my interest in it, and... This might be one that I have to say, like, I mean, this is my favorite painting. I started off strong here. Loved this because it's one of my favorite places. I love the greens and the rocks and everything. Um, but then we just never, that was a fail. Like, that one's not great. I don't know. I don't know why I, I can't, I can't seem to, to get myself through this one. See, I mean, you can even tell. That's that landscape didn't care. I didn't even try. It's, it, I, you can tell. I either really didn't try or this paper is really bad. I, it's probably a little bit of both. I like that Cheap Joe sticker. And then I do, I use the canvas lamp. I'm really happy with it. It was quite an investment for me, but it's been so useful. Um, then these are the last two that I'm working with. I've been primarily working with these and then my visual journal with the coil bound for the sketchbook journey class. And the more I work with them, the more I realize. So these are both the Hanamula, um, and this is the cotton version, and this is the non-cotton version. And I would say, if you're picking between these two, definitely pick the cotton over the non-cotton. Um, I just, night and day, there's a big difference in how the paper functions. See how this is so streaky? Um, it's going to kind of dry out on you more quickly. Oh, I can't wait to do this page. I forgot I drew out all these mushrooms. Um, I mean, it. you can get things done, but it's not It's not going to have the same, same properties and effect. And I kind of like this more cream paper. So um, I do love this one, but I think I might love something else a little bit more. But I'm not going to, I don't know. I'm not going to be, I can't give a full review until I really use it and work with it. And I kind of want to try the cold press version as well, but I feel hopeful. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Uh, mm, ugly page. Uh, yeah, I did a whole version on, um, how to like refresh pages you don't like in here and see my house again makes an appearance. Um, yeah. So I'm going to flip this to like a time lapse and just do a little painting and see if maybe one of these books I can finish right now. But these are far from done, um, but they'll get done. These will get done. Mm -hmm.